Well, let's dig into the turmoil that is playing out in the banking sector, starting with First Republic. Reports this afternoon that J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon leading the talks with other big bank CEOs on a new plan to aid the bank. Shares were off over 40 percent. We are just off the lows of the day as we kick off the final hour of trading. Now, the stock has certainly been on a steady slide ever since the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. We want to bring in David Long, Raymond James, Managing Director of Equity Research. David, it's great to see you. So ahead of this news today, you downgraded First Republic last week. Now there are reports of another effort underway to stabilize the bank. Is it necessary? What's your reaction to this report? Sure. Well, if you take a step back and look at the news over the weekend that came with the Swiss banking system, with UBS sort of bailing out um, Credit Suisse, if you will, after a $50 billion injection last week, you look back at or you look at the First Republic situation and they got their own $30 billion infusion last week. And I think what this shows us is that this crisis is not over yet. And we've had step A by the regulators with the introduction of the bank term funding pram, funding program. And that was supposed to give the um, depositors confidence that the banks would backstop deposits that were not insured. Then we had case B or step B, I should say, with the injection of 30 billion into First Republic. And here we are today talking about potentially C with First Republic as that $30 billion in, in deposits that came from the, the 11 larger banks may not be enough to keep them uh, in, 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 in good standings here. So Plan C could be some sort of equity injection, and maybe that deposit changes into an equity injection by these 11 banks. So this is being discussed right now, I believe, and maybe we'll know more after the close. Are you surprised that the report from the journal on J.P. Morgan they would not send shares back the other way and give the markets, give investors some relief? Yeah, you know, these types of things typically happen when the market is closed. The, this, this must have leaked out. I would believe that if J.P. Morgan is involved in some of the other banks in discussions with First Republic on, on another type of bailout, if you will, these things typically you don't want to come out during the trading hours. As you can see, the stock down about 44 percent right now. Um, that's something that we'd prefer having discussed uh, in between market hours. But look, First Republic is in a tough situation. Their debt was downgraded a second time further into junk status on a Sunday afternoon. If you include the heightened funding costs for the bank and match that against their assets, it's not profitable. So they are in a bind. They need some help. And the rest of the banks, and I think the regulators, do not want to see another failure. So they're doing everything possible to stop that from happening here. David, there was a group of the mid-sized banks who asked the government to insure all deposits for the next two years, something that might be uh, being discussed right now. Do you think that's necessary in order to avoid a wider bank run in the future? I sure think it could be necessary. We did not get that. That would have been the best case that Sunday night, I believe it was the mm -hmm. 12th, when we were waiting for the Federal Reserve to react to the Silicon Valley Bank news. And it didn't come out then. We did not get the best case. That's something that I think there must still be considering. And like I said, we, we may see step number C this afternoon or before the open tomorrow. There could be a D and there's probably going to be an E. There will be other steps taken uh, to stem the tide here. You know, the, the full deposit insurance, I don't think the regulators would like to go there. They'll get there if they have to, though. It seems like they try to react when they have to. And if they were to preempt that and had announced something over the weekend to ensure the deposits, I think that could have spooked the market uh, more than they wanted to before it really needed it. If, in fact, or when First Republic is shored up, do you presume that will stop this game of whack-a-mole and that we will level out in the days ahead? And, or will there just be one after the other? Sure. I, I do think... As I said before, with First Republic, if you if you just do the math on their income statement and their balance sheet, it's very challenging to find a profit. You, they're they're really not profitable with the with the cost of their borrowing here. When I look at like a Pack West, which I published on this morning, I do cover that stock. Even with the heightened uh, cost of of borrowing right here, they can still make a profit. That's not the case for First Republic. So First Republic seems to be on paper the one that has the greatest risk. If if this Whack-a-mole continues. 
Um, I, I don't know. I, it's all about confidence, deposit or confidence. And I'm not sure what it's going to take. I've talked with some people that have uh, indicated anecdotally that the amount of de- deposit insurance doesn't matter. Um, they just want to feel safe with their bank. So even if the Fed were to step up with an increase in the FDIC insurance, I think that is a positive. But I'm not a psychologist, so I'm, I'm not sure how everyone's going to act with their own dollars, which they do want to protect as much as possible. It certainly seems to be a crisis of confidence. I think that is very, very safe to say at this point. David, what does this lead, though? I guess, how much has the game maybe changed for this group of stocks, for regionals, and are some in, a, in the position mm-hmm. to capitalize on an event like this? Sure. So we had nine quarters, straight quarters, of positive earnings revisions for the banks. In January, with the fourth quarter earnings releases, was the first quarter that we had net negative revisions for the banks. And we've been saying for several months that deposit costs are going to rise. Deposit betas could end up higher than expected. And this issue over the last 10 to 12 days has exacerbated that. So bank net interest margins are going to come down. Estimates are likely to come down pretty substantially for the bank space as we enter earnings season next month. As far as who's ready to benefit, I sure think some of the bigger banks are are poised to benefit. And I think there are some regionals that can benefit from this. You know, if, if you want some ideas, I'll say Wells Fargo is one that I'm bullish on. I think they will be a winner out of this. And Wintrust Financial, WTFC, a local bank to me here in Chicago, they've got the setup very well to benefit from this, from this with their, uh, the way that their deposit system is set up. All right, good stuff. We appreciate that. David Long, thanks so much.